Welcome everybody, we are starting into our ESO housing hike. This is casually touring player houses in the Elder Scrolls Online, seeing the cool things you can do with the houses, with the furnishings, and with a little creativity and design you can do amazing things, infinite possibilities. And I'm Jay Hart Ellis, I'll be your tour guide as we visit a bunch of homes right now on the PCEU server. This is something I stream live each week at twitch.tv slash jhartellis. You can always send me a mail in-game, same name if you're on PCNA or PCEU, do it for both servers each Friday. And Twitch chat is here. They'll be spamming emotes at me and having some fun, hopefully. Probably getting some prizes at the end. Or if you're watching on the YouTube VOD, if you could please subscribe, that helps a lot. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, no particular theme. We'll go see lots of different styles as we tour through these. We have Drop Stitch. It has a World War II pastiche plane. I may have butchered the pronunciation on that. So, let's see what this looks like. It's a tall boy. I've been going to several Drop Stitches homes over the past couple of housing hikes. They are very good at making these mechanical types of things. Last week we had seen a couple of their cool robots and uh, spaceships. Little space drop ships. So, I love the creativity. So we have a World War II plane. It looks more like a spaceship. Maybe it's just the styling with the metal and everything. Maybe I have to uh, think of these as being a little bit different material for it to be a World War II ship or uh, aircraft. I, I'm not super familiar with the design on that. I don't all know all my World War II history too, uh, well enough, <laughs> I suppose. Or maybe this is a more obscure type of a thing. Any World War II buffs here are like, oh yeah, this was used in these battles and by this country or these countries. I'm not super sure. I, I'm definitely liking all of the different use of the, the Dwemer piping and the clockwork platings. And a lot of these come from the Brass Fortress Home Goods Furniture. Layering is amazing. Yeah, uh, Drop Stitch does an amazing job with constructing these sorts of things. I think I can get into it, too. Yeah, here's the back. Here's the back. So, we'll get in. And you can see different things inside. Now, this would be... Now, it nearly looks futuristic with all the metal, um, but it's historical in, in, in a way. So, um, maybe, maybe recreating this... There might be certain elements here that make some sense. This looks like a... <laughs> I think it's a big bomb. Um, oh no. Don't want to be knocking on that. Huh. Okay, okay. I don't know what type of, type of bomb it is. And then we have all the controls. I love, I love the controls here. So they're using boilers for like these controls. And then we have like styluses and little skeleton keys from Brass uh, Fortress Achievement Vendor. And those work really well. Sextant luxury furniture in there. And just all these different, different things so you can navigate the ship. Fly this. And then it even has, you know, some cushion here so the pilot can be Somewhat comfortable. <laughs> I'm totally digging the design on this. I'm actually really curious how they did this little harness type of a thing. Mm. Oh, oh, let me check. They look like calipers, maybe? Let me see. They are... I might not be able to... Go at them. Oh, it's part of the Somnola station. Nope, nope, it's, I can't actually toggle that. I can't quite tell what these little rope things are. Anyway, they've done something creative with it. It might all be the Somnola Station clockwork crafted furnishing, but I don't think it is. Maybe it is. One of the provision, provision item racks? Uh, maybe. Anyway, there are quite a few... That's one thing, is whenever you're looking at a furnishing, like, look at the parts of it that stick out, and then you can use those and isolate those, because you can mush things however you want together, sync them into each other, and then you just get a couple of interesting textures sticking out. That's how you have, like, the nice skeleton keys. You don't have the key part, but you have the, the handle of it. 
um, and then you get a nice texture. So, yeah, getting really creative with the design on this. Could be the wood elf bladder. Th oh, yes, I think you're right. I think it's the wood elf bladder, the fermenting bladder. Um, it's just the right size for that. And then the bladder itself is covered up with the big <laughs> big drums here. Okay, cool. Yep, that's that's a... Oh, drops, drops it. Such you. That would confirm it then. Perfect, perfect. Amazing design, amazing design. Okay, and we have four other houses to get to. We'll go through these relatively quickly today. I'm expecting maybe a plumber to come over today, and I need to go a little faster today. <laughs> so, um, we'll, uh, we'll uh, get through these. Next up, we have Bean Sprout. Has an all Velothi. Bean Sprout often has guildies over when I tour the, their houses. We'll see. We'll see if that's the case today. Might just be able to tour this on my own, which is fine. Okay, so Bald Velothi, what do they have? What do they have? I like Bean Sprout stylings. I think most everything's going to be inside. I have a couple things, just like some flowers and everything, just makes it a little bit more lovely outside. Okay, let's get a sense of this. I definitely l like the custom bookcase with the grandfather clock, the uh, ans Alnor Ancestor clock um, embedded in the middle there. A couple cabinets down below. So good custom build on this one. Very large. Love the wine rack. It's been embiggened a little bit. It's extended with a couple of other furnishings with the cabinet on the top especially. So that's one thing that you can do a lot of the time is instead of just taking a furnishing like here, just plunking it down and using it as is, you can combine things together and make them a little bit bigger, a little bit more interesting, a few more textures going on, um, maybe a little bit more for the purpose of the house that you have. So I definitely like it when uh, people have a little bit of creativity and come up with different ways of putting furnishings together. Okay, and let's keep looking. These uh, drapes pr fit pretty well over the windows there. Oh, here's a kitchen. Oh, this is a good room for it. Okay, cool. Don't normally see a kitchen here. So we have some tea being warmed up. We have... Ooh, I like this little cheese... They, on the luxury vendor, they had these Tavani glass domes. They were like 1,000 gold each. They were like really cheap. Um, but what you can do is sink it all the way down, and it's just enough to cover the cheese. And then you have your little cheese slicer here, like you're going to put it on the bread. Beautiful. Perfect. It's cute. I think these glass things are something people can really be creative with. You know, just isolating those textures and making them however you need them to be for your home. Too bad. Hey, thank you, thank you. Happy Moo Day. <laughs> it's everyday Moo Day. <laughs> Beautiful. Do bad, do bad. Appreciate the resub. Kind of Im embedding the books everywhere. Big custom fireplace. They're actually using the Siller Stone, which would have come with a house, which is outside, and they have instead used it to make this lovely rocky fireplace. That's a, that's a good way of using that. More books. More books back here and putting other things in the bookcases just to personalize it a little bit like that safe box. Gold about. Maybe they do some accounting here. Okay, we'll keep exploring. Nice fireplace. I know, I know. Bean Sprout's really good at making custom creations like that. I have a Dark Elf styling on this. Makes sense given the location in Vardenfell with the great houses and more up above. More great houses design, Dark, dark Elf design. Some of these were from original homestead furnishings and some of them are from Vardenfell furnishings. They tend to blend pretty well together. 
And I'm gonna sneak out into the balcony. Maybe there'll be something here, I'm not quite sure. Not so much. Go back in. And go up. There's definitely something up here, though. Final bed. With a good railing, using that Merkmeyer ramp, instead of using it as a ramp, you put it on its side. Just, you know, using things in different ways. Or using some bottoms of some tree stumps here to make a nice shelf for the back of the bed. Probably using the same one back there. Yeah, lots of times the bottoms of furnishings will have interesting textures. Sometimes they have not so good textures, but sometimes they do have good textures, and then you can use them to make flat flat surfaces. Like even here, I, I totally overlook this. This is the bottom of a Merkmeyer kiln, but you know, you flip it upside down, and then you have a nice round table, and there are a lot of round table options, and this definitely fits the, the kind of muddy... Um, clay feel of the, the Dark Elf stylings here. So, kind of a good mix and match of textures going on. All very well immersive with the home style here. So, awesome! Thank you, Beansprout, for inviting me over here. Your textures the walls with wood. Wait, wait, I didn't even notice that. They might have just done such a good job with it, I didn't really notice. Um, wait, 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 up Oh, yeah, right here. Um... Oh, no, I didn't even notice that coming up, because it looks so natural. They totally did. So they have these little alcoves that they've made using the bottoms of those trees again. And they did such a good job with it, I it didn't even notice. <laughs> oh, oh, that's cool. I, I, really, I really like that. So yeah, they're using furnishings to the bottom of those stumps to seamlessly retexture this and make it a little bit more green. Okay, yeah, that's that's really awesome, actually. Yeah, all throughout there, too. Yeah, okay. Sometimes forget what the base house looks like. Okay, and we'll continue along. Very, yes, it looks so good. Dubet says, very cleverly done. I, th I agree, I agree. 400 out of 400 items in that house, too. Okay, we'll continue along. Just have five houses a day. Go rel relatively fast. Get more decoration inspiration. So we saw a complete mechanical creation, and then we saw more of like a more realistic character type of a home. You can always do housing however you want. You can get artsy with it, or think about how your character might live. Okay, so Thisbe has Quantum Inderilla, Inderilia. They have an elsewhere mansion. This is a home I don't see very often, so... For whatever reason, but they've decided to completely change the look of it. So, Quantum Indorelia would be a great house-style home, but they've decided to make it Kajiti. They've decided to make it elsewhere-style. So, they kind of have this... You know, I can tell that from the stylings of the wall textures and all the archways and everything. And... We'll get up into this. And I think they've only really used a courtyard for this, so I'm really ex interested to see what they've done with it. Yeah, it definitely has all the, the the color palette of elsewhere here. Big custom <laughs> cushion couch for the Alfique here, for a zombie. Very lush. Lo love the look of this. So using multiple beds, using four different beds to make that couch. And, you know, it looks a little... A little over the top, like a Alfique might want. And then, beautiful fountain being embedded in here. So this is a Four Lions fountain. It's a giant round fountain, but they just used a quarter of it effectively. And then you just have all the lovely water. They use a small everlasting waterfall. So even though this courtyard doesn't really have water features inside the courtyard, they can add their own with like the fountain or with the everlasting waterfall. And then it just kind of like goes down into lush garden down below. Oh, hey, you're here, you're here. 
It's in the sun. It's in the sun. <laughs> Sabi knows she deserves it. I know, I know. I really like all the plants. It's just like so full of life here and full of color. Oh, there's even more. <laughs> Turn the corner and there's even more. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm always impressed by the golden ferns and all, all the colors that you can really incorporate into your own home. Lots of times it's a matter of contrast. Can I sneak back through here or do I need to? I got a little turned around. Love the painting easel. You know, you put that artist palette there. It's like you're still working on it. Maybe you're inspired by the scenery out here. You have a beautiful view. It is nighttime and it is raining and thunderstorming right now. Normally, that's not going to be the case, but I think this is okay. I have to worry about the paint getting all wet. Um, that's okay. Um, if anything, it does allow things like the glowing plants to really shine through and uh, they kind of get spotlighted during the night. Lots of houses look better at night. <laughs> I've, I've more than once asked for day-night toggles. I hope that it happens at some point. Let's see, that just goes back to the beginning. Okay, okay. Okay, and going up, going up, going up. A cushion. <laughs> it's said to be on the lookout for a cushion from our previous contest. We had a... Was it Beautiful Bedrooms Contest? Beautiful Bedrooms Contest. I gave everybody a purple cushion as a participation prize, so I always do something like that. We have a Crazy Kitchens Contest coming up later this month, too. Um, looking forward to that. Mard Bliss with Big Rage. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Somebody could do a shout-out. That'd be fantastic. Mart Bless, thank you. Welcome to our PCEU housing hike. We're touring some homes, getting some decoration inspiration. We're right now in Thisbees. Quantum Indorelia. And it's like, I have no basis of <laughs> knowing what house it is. Because uh, it looks totally different. Yeah, so you can get a good view out of Deshaun from here, too. Which is really intriguing given the uh, elsewhere styling of the house. You've done such an, a, a beautiful job with the architecture on this. Um, like going up here using the walls and then using a gazebo and everything. It feels so natural. And then you have all these custom things here too. Like it looks like Fazez had a little spat with that pillow at some point, Three. right? Oh my gosh, Mugless with her sub as well. Thank you so, so, so much. Happy Friday, Marvelous says. Thank you, thank you. And did I miss too much? It's a beautiful home. I don't think I can use a door. Oh, I can. Let's see here. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, nothing. No, I'm not going to worry about that. I do notice that they're under their item limit, so I think they just kind of have things as they want them. Um, so I'm not going to go poke around too much unless they tell me to. Uh, I'm assuming that one is too. It looks like it would be based off the grain of the uh, wood there. Okay, it kind of makes you use your imagination. What might be behind there? Maybe, given everything else that's here, maybe some additional bedrooms or maybe a bathroom or something. Um, the other things that we maybe haven't seen throughout here. Or secrets. All the secrets, all the amazing things. <laughs> Use your vivid imagination. Think what might be behind that door. It's a zombie's secret place. Okay, and I think that will do it. I, I really am just digging the look of this, which is you're like, okay, I have a home. You can use any home, right? And it's like, I want it to feel like a bit of elsewhere. And then how do you do that? And then, you know, how do you make it a little a little personalized? Like, I, I really love all the potted plants and everything that you have here. And given a lot of attention and love to that. And it's just a lovely, happy plant corner over here. Okay, good deal. Ba -ba -ba. Okay, and we'll continue along. I think... 
Okay, next up we'll go to Shrek and Tamriel's Gorner Estate. So we'll continue with our housing hike. Seat code says there are new dwarven doors. Yeah, Markarth door, the double door. Kind of opens this way. Um, you can sink them into the wall and stop people from opening them. Ooh, clever, clever. Yeah, they have a bit of depth to them. Yeah, they came with a Flames of Ambition update. Haven't seen a lot of those new furnishings being incorporated into houses yet, but yeah, we'll see those more and more. I actually saw some of it last week. Okay, and we have Shrek and Tamriel's Gorner Estate. They called this a terraformed build, so they've completely transformed this place. Normally, Gorner is just kind of like an open bowl with a couple of pods in it, and other than that, you can do quite a lot with it. Oh, they've really changed this up a lot. So we're in some sort of like a lovely cave, full of life, full of water, full of glowy goodness. I definitely like how they have the moonlit cove vines kind of scattered throughout with various mushrooms. Kind of nearly looks like an extension of Blackreach a little bit, but I don't know if that's quite what they were going for. They have creepy things here. It's maybe a bit of a creepy underground cave forest. Hmm. I, I am definitely... Wanting to keep going through here. Mm, Pyfanny4 with a follow. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to our housing hike. Okay, so the water flowing in. Keeping this place alive. Oh, such an interesting place. I, I definitely like how they have like the, the little taxidermy birds up above. Just looks like they're flying about. Soaring up above. Hmm. Gargoyles and things. Maybe some signs of a civilization here and there. For the most part, very taken over by nature. And you have something like an alien light well here, and you're like, hmm, who is here? We have these chimes, or the or the lights along the way. So who who's making use of this place? Could could be wood elves of some sort. Bit magical, bit mysterious. Hmm. Weird, weird things about witches, maybe. Maybe it's a bit of a puzzle, or maybe it's just meant to be enjoyed as this transformation of a space, which they've done an amazing job with using all the rocks. These are probably from a regional equipment vendor, or not, um, to use to Cyrodiil at this point. A home goods furniture from one of the various regions. Um, granite slab boulders. I think those come from East March home good furniture is what I want to say. East March is a good one to check out anyway. <laughs> I think I think it might be from there. Uh, we have different paths to go on and different secret, secret ways. Ooh, where am I going? I don't know. Oh. Oh, it's like a little secret crafting area. That's cool. Kind of opens up into this orchid gazebo. Pretty bright in here. Kind of hidden. I don't know if I... It's pretty well decorated, though. Nice and evenly spaced out. With all the banners and everything, and all the signs, so you know which station is where. Good way of using those signs. Okay. I like the symmetry. And more secret things? Paths upon paths. East March, haha. <laughs> Blue Pop says, looks like this cave would be half underneath water where someone has made base. Oh, maybe, maybe. It's such a big place. They've used like the entirety of the courtyard and just kind of like have you winding around it. With the music and everything. Oh, there's a dragon flying around. <laughs> Oh, okay, so, oh, hey, we kind of saw a witch before. Here's kind of another witch over here. So it's a bit of an encampment. A bit magical, especially with the skeletal dragon there. And it's flying around using the character pathing. A really cool thing you can do with the character pathing, especially with the flying things, is that, you know, you can just make them go through the air and they just kind of will glide along or fly, or fly along. And it looks kind of cool. Um, so I'm super glad that they added the character pathing. And then, oh, there's more through here, too. More and more and more. I think I missed part two. Kind of looks more like a relief statue based off of sinking it into the rock face there. And then, where is this going to go? 
Should I be concerned? Should I be concerned? I, I have a... I, I don't know if I'm just going to suddenly fall for a trap or something. Oh, it just goes back. <laughs> it goes back to the light wall. Aha, a little secret place. I miss that going forward. Okay, so I can kind of wind around. All kind of connects. All these little secret passageways. Oh, this is... I hope I didn't miss too much. I, I didn't really... I'm going to hug left. At one point, it kind of split off. Oh, yeah, there are kind of a couple things. The gargoyles looking down. It makes me wonder... A lot about this place. So it seems to be a place, maybe a little secret place for witches or just magic in general. Okay, and I think that will mostly do it. And they've just done an amazing job of transforming it with all their rocks and all of the plant life down below. And yeah, good deal, good deal. Using the a lot of homegoods furnishings, like the, the pebbles and the vines and everything from elsewhere or for some Somerset and feel like I'm in a totally different place. Amazing how many secret paths there are. I know, I know. Okay, and last up. Trinity says, gorgeous. Last home today. A relatively short housing hike this week. We'll go to... Sotha's. Cold Harbor's real estate. And they may have a secret in here. I'll try to figure it out. We'll get in. We'll get in. Sotha. Sotha. What do you think of with a name like Sotha? Hmm. Maybe like Sotha Sill. They have a tribunal temple. I'm going to sign this guest journal from Essential Housing Tools add-on. Let them know I've come by. So tribunal. That would be Sotha Sill. That would be Amalexia. And it would be Vivek. And I love this wall using the decorative sky shards. Going through the veil here. And opens up right in Sothasil. <laughs> right there. Front and center. With the decoy elder scroll. Ooh, that's a little that's a little something there. Let me get a good look of this. Just as like a centerpiece. That's it's so bright in here. They've done an amazing job lighting this up. And you can see a lot of other elements that would maybe be representative of the Tribunal. Uh, a lot of things from Vardenfelt in particular, like the giant mushrooms. I see these various ancestral tapestries and everything that would maybe indicate a little bit of the history of Vardenfell. And... And around Vivek City in particular. And so, just amazing. Are you using a reshade filter? Or are those just... Is this, this... Nope, I don't have reshaders on at all. Yeah, this is that bright. Using a lot of these fabricant trees from Clockwork City, which would make sense with Sotha Still, they really pick up the light because they are more like made out of metal. So they have a metallic sheen reflection going on with them. So they're very bright, just kind of like I am. <laughs> so... Um, beautiful, beautiful. I relate. Yeah, so you'll see a lot of ancestral tombs throughout Vardenfell, and I'm kind of getting a little bit of a sense of that. Or the, uh, a tri the tribunal have, like, these Amalexia carpets and everything. They've, they've used a lot of these, um, to kind of decorate this up. And all looks pretty nice here now. Oh yeah, here would be an altar to Almalexia. So it's a tribunal temple. Offering of some mushrooms. <laughs> okay, good deal. We don't have a lot of Almalexia things going on with furnishing-wise yet. Maybe they will at some point. I don't know. Um, digging the mushrooms, though. Have a couple. I like the mushrooms. White angular with the hype. I'll give you more mushroom hype. More mushroom hype. More mushroom hype. Beautiful. <laughs> And let's go see the rest of this. There's so many details. And there's Vivek. From Vivek City. At least with an ESO. Holds the rock in place. Preventing it from smashing the city and blowing up Red Mountain. Oh, I really like what they've done with the... Uh, 
lights here, the braziers. You can actually toggle the states on this one. It is called, what is it called? A Velothi brazier. Um, you can toggle those, and so it kind of has the, the gold and the blue of the split Vivek, right? Perfect, perfect. I've done an amazing job of just making this feel, like, way over the top, using a lot of these giant, giant furnishings, especially giant mushrooms, giant rocks, and uh, big fountains and everything. Just everything makes this feel very full. And maybe another altar to Amal... Nope, this is to Sothisil. This one came from a furnishing bundle, I think. Oh, the Lexi one's craftable. Yeah, that one's, so that one's Sothisil. Okay, so it's still altar there. I normally only see the Elmalexi one because that's the only craftable one. <laughs> okay. And then this could be for the three of them. So we have the three different tap Velothi tapestries there. And you can see the Elmalexia and Vivek and so it's still up above. It's a temple, so maybe reciting something from here. What house is this? This is a Cold Harbor Surreal Estate from Sotha on PCEU. So the incredible thing about this is the Cold Harbor Surreal Estate is just this flat plain, and it's all blue and gloomy, and they totally changed that. So what did they do? They, they completely changed the floor. They built up wall, walls around it. They built up, smack my mic, um, uh, a, a ceiling with the mushrooms as well, and then Celestial Nimbus and everything. Intimidator 1 with a big raid. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to our EU housing hike. Somebody could do a shout out. That'd be amazing. Hope you had an amazing stream. We are touring our final home of the day on PCEU. Getting some decoration inspiration. A Sotha's Tribunal Temple. Oh, there's the Tribunal Altar. Lovely, lovely colors. Recognize a lot of these crystals. You can get these green crystals from the Vivek City Achievement Vendor. They are... Quite lovely. <laughs> Need more types of crystals in the in the SO. Um I have a lot of nice purple ones from Blackreach we don't have our hands on. I don't know. I don't know. I need more glowy things. So I like how there are all these different side rooms and all these it's a very expansive um build. I Maybe mean, that's not the right word. It's a very all-encompassing type of a build. They, they've done an awful lot with it to have all these different rooms and kind of imagining, you know, people making a pilgrimage here and showing their respects here and feels feels like a little slice of uh, Varnfell here too. Intimidator with a follow as well. Beautiful, beautiful. Am I following you? Here, take a take a look at Sothasil and all and all of his Majesty. Well, I go check on that. <laughs> let me check. Let me check. It's beautiful. Am I? I am not following it. There you go. There you go. Perfect. It's beautiful. So, oh, that is you hosting me. Thank you. Thank you. Need your healing crystals. More crystals and glowing plants. I know. I know. And oh, here's here's a bit more than Nerevar. A lot of history here too. One thing I really like about this build, with it being so detail, full of detail, especially, is uh, maybe even as a, you go around doing quests and whatnot, um, you don't maybe get a sense that they they worship the tribunal and respect them, but you don't necessarily get a sense of how that might actually look sometimes. Especially since all their ancestral tombs are all dusty and seem long forgotten. So I think this breathes some fresh new life into it. Oh, oh, this... Oh, I want to get... Can I get up on the wing? Wait, wait, wait. This, oh, the wing has a collision. Oh, this is cool. So it's like Vivek is slaying the dragon. <laughs> we can get a sense of the scale of this. So it's that big Calgrontid statue and they've put it down like this, and it's like Vivek with a spear is uh, doing a finishing blow here. Okay, that's cool. That's really cool. Now, there's one more secret. 
Everlia says those pedicles are bound currently. Oh. I'll have to go check. Oh, I got stuck. Did they overdo it on binding the furnishings? Uh-oh. I'll have to go check. Hmm. That means whatever is still out there would be worth a lot. Hmm. Okay, there's one more thing. There was one more thing. I totally missed it. At the entrance, see, you just kind of walk through here and you see those mushrooms, and you're like, well, I'm going to go towards that glowy light. Well, no. By being distracted by the glowy light, I totally missed the secret pathway. Hopefully I can get up here. There is something up here. And I believe my... Oh, no. I, I need to be right back. <laughs> um, one moment, one moment.